So today I'm going to be upgrading the brakes on the Miata from the factory brakes that I had with EBC Red Stuff pads over to 949 Racing slash Super Miata's BX11 box mount braking kit. It's a fairly simple brake upgrade. Um, on the bottom I've got the old Willwood calipers that came off my Tacoma. Over there I've got an 11 inch diameter rotor um, intended for an ND Miata, the Brembo model. Apparently the standard and the Brembo use the same size rotor, but the Brembo specific ones are better machines so they cool a little bit better and are a little bit lighter. So you go ahead and use those instead. They're not substantially more expensive. I got these on Rock Auto. I think they were like 25 bucks, maybe 35 bucks. I don't know. Um, the kit itself is pretty simple. It's that orange bracket you see there. These two little pieces that kind of box in the bracket and then those bolts also got the lines back there those lines um, basically go from the metric Miata you know thread over to the Willwood which is a standard thread just keeps you from having to use an adapter in the middle and it's a pretty simple setup they've also see the little washers back there they're like these little shims um, depending on the condition of the spindle the knuckle on your Miata you know the caliper might sit a little uh, off on one side so you kind of shim it just as you know center of the rotor about the caliper I had to use four on the other side I think I'll do the same thing here four on each bolt I already did the other side just so I could get familiar with the swap it's really straightforward I mean Miata brakes in general are, are some of the simplest things you'll ever interact with on a car um, it's almost as easy as working on a motorcycle I would say so let's go ahead and show you how to get this done so looking over at the Miata's factory brakes, here's the factory caliper. These bolts allow you to, you know, tilt this over to take the pads out. But there's two other bolts, which you can't see on camera, but are directly behind those, right? Closer to the center. And these are the ones that hold this in. These are a 14 millimeter. Um, so you can just kind of pop this on. I don't even have to see them to know where they are, hilariously enough. Go ahead and just tap that same thing on the one up here tap that right and after that they're pretty much hand tight um, so I'll just do this and uh, if you'd like to be a little quicker <laughs> not spend so much time on threading bolts you can do this all right So with those two bolts removed, this whole assembly can slide right off the rotor. Might be on a little tight. And you can just kind of rest this over on your control arm. We're not going to deal with this for now. We'll have to deal with this when we disconnect the brake line. But now that's off. Now it's all a matter of taking off the rotor. Your rotor is not just going to come off. It typically tends to seize on there a little bit. So if you look at the rotor in the face, You'll notice that the rotor has a little threaded hole, right? It's right here, and I've put a bolt in it. That hole has an M8 by 1.25 thread, um, so that's why I've got this little screw in here. You just stick this lug nut out of the way, and obviously you want your lug nuts off so you can pop your rotor out. So I'll just go ahead and remove these. But all you'll need to do is thread an M8 by 1.25 bolt in there, and I mean, Depending on the rotors you got, they might be different, but I wouldn't assume so, right? You kind of just go ahead and turn that bolt until your rotor pops. And you'll see it, and there it goes. Now the rotor comes off. All right, that's that. So, at this point, the only thing you really have to do is, I recommend you grease up these surfaces just so that, you know, your rotor is not kind of seizing to that. You want to get some tin snips and remove part of this because it interferes with your bracket. Um, so I'll do that right now. And then we'll start mounting the hardware from 949. All right, so coming in with some tin snips. And if you want, you can just remove this entire thing. Um, I know a lot of people do, but I'm just gonna go ahead and trim mine. So on the other side, I kind of just did this. Tin snips here. 
There we go. Now this little piece will come off with ease. And I can come back and uh, re-trim this here. Alright, now earlier I ended up with a sharp edge on the bottom. I had moved my uh, leg past this reaching for something and got a nice deep slice in my knee. So you may want to kill that little corner. These tin snips might just be in bad shape. Wow. <laughs> that flew to the other side of the garage, it's funny. Okay, and I remember I had to bend in these tabs so that they're out of the way. I bent this down as well. And I remember it, this entire thing was just kind of touching the rotor, so I bent it back some in general. It's a very flimsy sheet of metal, so not hard to do. Now we want to trim off this top one as well. Alright, that's cutting more like I remember. That's that. Gotta trim this again, bend this away from where the rotor is gonna be. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mount my bracket. As I mentioned, um, I did have to use four washers on the other side. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing here. So, first things first, let's grab a couple of the bolts, just pop them through here. All right. Then grab a pack of shims, open that up, and as I said, four per. Of course, this side might be, you know, worn or deformed differently over time, so this may be too many shims and I may have to adjust it, but for now I'm gonna just start with four as the baseline. All right, so the shims are on there. The next thing we want to do is we want to put on our bracket. You don't want to tighten the heck out of this. And actually, <laughs> I've uh, missed a step here. So you actually want these little guys with this long part facing toward you uh, to be mounted on these. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this and be careful not to lose my shims. Pop it right back through. That's that. Do the same thing uh, over here. Uh, okay. My gloves are uh, getting caught in the shim. That's always fun. Alright. Pop that on. Put this here. Now, earlier I was freaking out thinking, oh man, maybe because these are the older Wilwood Dynalites, they don't fit well with this kit. I thought I was going to have to shave these down. The reason I ran into that issue is because this all has a very, very tight fitment in here. And you don't want to tighten anything down fully until everything is placed correctly. Alright, so don't get excited tightening everything. Now, if you look at this bracket, you see how this part is like worn down. You want this to face away from you, right? that way and these like little ears are actually what holds the willwood caliper so the chunkier part actually goes toward the knuckle so I'm just gonna lightly thread that top and bottom and I'm gonna push it out All right you don't want to thread it too much with this not against the surface you want it against the surface just because the fitment is so tight like you might not even be able to push the bolts back if you do it that way all right, so let's just leave that there. Go ahead and, as I mentioned, put some grease on this surface. So in order to do that, just grab a rag. Got some uh, Mobile One synthetic bearing grease here that I've used on a ton of projects at this point. All right, so kind of gonna grease around the hub. And then all around the surface, this will make it easier to take the rotor off next time 
Um, also keep you from forming as much rust in between the rotor and this thing. I've painted this in the past and you know over time it still rusts through um, just because these rotors sitting on there and it's wearing into the paint there on that surface so greasing it up kind of reduces the incidence of that. Now brake rotors they come from the factory coated in a grease which of course you want to remove because you will foul your brake pads otherwise so I've already done that um, what I've basically done is that I've shot them down with brake cleaner spray, wiped them, shot them down again, wiped them, and then just shot them down one last time to get rid of any lint left over from these rags. Um, there are people who think that you just spray brake clean and that's it, you let it evaporate. That's not how that works. You, trust me, if you wipe it, you're going to get a ton of filth off on the rag, indicating that you should have wiped it. So always do that. All right. Now, it's that surface greased, go ahead, pop this rotor in place. All right, and I'm gonna put a couple of lug nuts on just to kind of hold it in place. It, it sits there nicely enough, but you know, the lug nuts help. You wanna make sure that it's not moving when we're doing this. And the threads on these nuts are pretty dirty. So I'll go back and clean that afterward. Jeez. Maybe I'll clean it now. I will definitely be doing extended studs on this car in the near future. These old crummy studs just kind of at the they're at their life's end, so. I also just love the way extended studs look, to be honest. <laughs> All right, so that's on nice and tight. I put all of them because this one didn't seat all the way in. I want to make sure that we're keeping this rotor as flush against here as, as possible. All right, so at this point, I've got my Wilwood caliper. All right, um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the brake pads into it and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to evaluate the fitment with the shims so All right, go ahead take these pads I've already squeezed these guys with the old pads to compress the pistons you won't have to do that if you're using new ones All right, slide these pads in here I can probably already just go ahead and put the pin in as well um, to hold the pads in place. So I'll go ahead and do that as well. So let's go ahead and put this big cutter pin through here. Get that guy out. Ah, giving me a little bit of trouble. It is a little bent, it's a used one probably just go ahead and get a new one. If you started with a new one, you wouldn't have this problem. It's in good enough shape that I can reuse it. You know, some people will tell you that's not safe. Um, use a new one for your safety, use a new one. There is a critter running through my garage. Ah, oh, it's a lizard. He's lucky my dogs aren't in here. He would die a very quick and painful death. Yeah, it's one of those big fat curly tails. My mom hates them for some reason. She thinks they eat the native lizards. But yeah, you want to just grab the stuff, bend it out. Mine is real tough because it's old. But that lizard's hilarious. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the Wilwood caliper on. Just gonna kind of slide it into place and it's a tight fit over the rotor I think these pads I got are thicker than the old pads that I had um, not just because they're worn but I mean I remember when I first got the HP pads I used when I put these wolds on my Tacoma the first thing that came to my mind are like wow these pads are unusually thin for brand new pads um, these Wilwood branded ones seem to be chunkier 
So <laughs> that may have, you know, something to do with why this is all fitting so tightly. Though with that put in, then you can kind of like swivel up your little box mount bracket thing and put a bolt through here. You kind of just jiggle it a little bit till you get alignment. And again, like leave everything fairly loose. Do the same thing on the bottom. Feel that threading in. Looks like uh, four shims was probably a good call on this side as well. Yeah, about right. So the bolts from uh, 949 have a 14 millimeter head on them. So you want to get a 14 mil socket and just go ahead and tighten them down. socket which I swore I had I'm pretty sure I just used um, to remove the stock bolts but I now no longer see because that's one of those weird things oh here it is all right so let's take this and just tighten down all these bolts and I'll get them as close to flush as possible first. You know, if I can reach these with the drill, I think that's just going to be the play because getting stuff the old-fashioned way gets boring after a while. It's tiresome. I just won't snug them all the way now. Okay, now we take the socket, bolt that, you know, kind of tighten these down. I have to check their online instructions and see if there's a torque spec for these things. I would assume there is, you would think, you know, it would make sense. I don't want to over torque, of course. Somehow that one is not as tight as it needed to be. Being a little gentle. Hey, it's that weird lizard. He's leaving my garage. Yeah, man. Right out. I uh, don't intend for this to be a lizard hotel, so. I mean, maybe you come eat little roaches that get in here every now and then. Alright, so that's all tightened down. This spins, but there's a serious tightness, so. I'm thinking I'm going to end up buying other pads because it's, it's not a shaming issue at this point, it's just the pads are so chunky uh, <laughs> that the car is gonna be dragging. So, not sure that I wanna deal with that. Um, I could just right wear them in to where it doesn't do that, but I, ideally, it, it really should not be that tight. Unless I didn't fully compress those pistons as far as I thought I did. They, they look like they're almost all the way in the bore. Um, maybe they, they have to go further, but... I'll probably take it for a spin, test it out, and if I'm not happy, I'll just change out the pads. So with this part done, I'm going to go find out what the torque is, I'll torque everything down to spec, and then we'll go ahead and we'll do the brake line. <laughs> 